All right. How's it going, everyone? Good. All right. One good. <laughs> I'll take it. Uh, so if you're here for static site generators, you're in the right place. Uh, who in here knows what a static site generator already is? Okay, quite a few. Actually, almost half the audience, at least. Cool. So hopefully I give you something that you didn't know. Uh, kind of the whole goal of me being here in the first place. But anyways, uh, my name's Dennis. Uh, I'm from Knoxville, Tennessee. I work for a company called Lirio, and I'm a, a product owner uh, for them. I was in uh, quality assurance, doing software automation. Before that, I was a software developer for, I forget how many years, seven years or so. And uh, I gotta say, the product owner role is a lot more fun because I don't have to code anymore, which, you know, that's a headache. Um, so, I'm trying to solve this problem. I have a bluegrass festival that I run back home in Indiana, and our website at the time when I so started volunteering was built with Microsoft Word. Yeah, seriously built on Microsoft Word. And it just was not up to par, you know, at all. Um, but I'm not a web developer. I'm not a UX designer, generalist, I'm not a UX guy at all. Uh, and I'm not really a software engineer anymore. So uh, I am lazy. <laughs> that's, that's my thing, I wanna do the laziest thing I can. I have another talk about build automation and the inspiration for that talk was I wanted to sit on my ass and impress my boss. So I automated the build uh, because I'm lazy. And you can be lazy too. It's okay. Uh, just caveat disclaimer, like I don't feel good at all right now. Like this whole change in weather has really got me. So I'm a little bit faint, but I'll be okay. Anyways, let's get to it. So what is Jamstack anyway? So uh, Matthias, who is the CEO at Netlify, uh, kind of coined this, this term of Jamstack, which is a modern web development architecture based on client-side JavaScript, reusable APIs, and mark markup. So why should you care? Uh, so to get into this, the barrier to entry is super, super low. It's a lot of value for a very, very small investment. You might not even pay anything to do it. I didn't. Uh, simple infrastructure, less dependencies than like a Microsoft ASP.NET application or something like that. That's a little overboard for what I need, right? And there's tons of uh, resources to get you to the market quickly. So I did say generators, and yes, there is more than one. So Jekyll, Hugo, Gatsby, Hexo, all of these things, there's many, 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 there's even one in, written in Haskell who in here programs in Haskell? All right, zero people, that's about right. <laughs> but, you know, that's the thing. I don't know why. Uh, the last one there on this list, Wyom, is now called something else. Like that changed in the last like month, and I can't remember the name of it. Uh, and I found out about it like today. <laughs> so uh, that's a little outdated, but are these static site generators actually used in the real world? And yeah. Uh, so Obama's presidential campaign raised $250 million and that site ran on Jekyll. That's kind of cool. That's a big thing. Uh, Healthcare.gov switched over to Jekyll uh, in 2013. So these things have been around for quite a, a while. They just haven't really picked up a lot of traction broadly, I guess. Um, and there's some other people that use Hugo too, or a static site generator. So I don't have a lot of time to build a website. Like this is on my free time, I'm trying to build this site. I wanna get it done. I got other things to focus on with the festival. A website's the least of my worries. But it is how I interact with my audience. So basically these are the steps. There's like five steps that actually build a site in a Hugo site from scratch. 
and it's super easy. And I'll point out number four here, this pick a theme. There's tons of themes out there that uh, you can install uh, or pull into your project and get everybody else's nice CSS because who in here likes writing CSS? All right, why, why? <laughs> I thank you, because that is the last thing I want to do, is write CSS. <laughs> but I'll definitely use your work, and that's, that's, what you, that's what you get from using a theme. Um, so there's this uh, config file, a Tomlin file, and basically that's the setup of your website. And uh, shortcut here, just copy paste the one out of the example that you download from your theme, that's what I do, and then I change the values to make it actually, you know, my base URL won't be example.com, probably, just gonna guess on that one, and that's not my name, but, you know, changing out these values super quick and you get something super uh, fast. You add some new content to your site, it's all marked down, you write the markdown, you run Hugo server, it spins up a live server in your instance, and if you're ready to actually build, you just run Hugo and it builds the site, converts all your markdown to uh, HTML and JavaScript, things I don't really care about, but I know it's super fast, right? And you end up with something like this, which is cool, I made a blog. That's pretty awesome, not really. Uh, I didn't need a blog, but what if you need like project documentation? Well, just pick a theme that matches what project documentation looks like, right? Super easy. Uh, and then that's cool because you just built a site that's outdated before it was even built, right? Does anybody else have that problem with project documentations already out of date before you even started documenting the project? If no one has that problem, please let me know who you work for. Uh, but you can build other things with this. So this is more like a brochure website where it's just highlighting some kind of product, right? This is kind of more what I needed for uh, for my, oops, I always do that, always hit the wrong key, for my uh, website for this festival. So here it is, it's already like done, right? So. If I want to actually see what this website looks like, I can just run Hugo server. It spins up on localhost 1313. I head over here, and then bam. All this running on a Hugo site, and I just downloaded the, downloaded the theme, and then tweaked some CSS. It was painful, but I had to tweak some CSS to get the, the colors and uh, the branding for our site, which I had to make up on the fly. But, you know, this is super, super nice because I don't have to stand up a server. I don't have to write enormous amounts of code. I don't have to have a LAMP stack or, or a WAMP stack or be tied to some kind of platform or anything. It's, well, I, I am tied to Hugo, right? But other than that, here it is, and you know all the UX people in the room are looking at the site, going, "Good God, this is terrible." And I agree, yeah, it needs some help. And this has actually been redone on a WordPress site because somebody else took this over, so more power to them. But um, you know, this got us through for that for that year, and uh, it solved the problem that I needed to solve. I think that's. That's the key takeaway from this is using this technology got me done with the thing I wanted to do and I could move on. So what does this actually look like? So let me collapse a couple things here. So your Hugo site is going to, that's probably super terrible to read. Uh, let's see if I can fix that.
There, that's a little better. All right, so your Hugo site kind of looks like this. So you've got your base directory of whatever your site name is, and then you have all these different things. Uh, I'm not really even sure what this archetype thing is, so I'm gonna skip over it, and I probably shouldn't have even said anything. But <laughs> the real meat and potatoes is your content. It takes most of the time building out one of these sites is gonna be actually writing the content, not building the site. And uh, there's some tools out there that we'll get into later that kind of help with this, so you don't even have to do that. Uh, you hand it off to somebody else and delegate it, because as a product owner, that's what you do. Uh, but you put all your content in here, and it's just marked down, so it's not super hard. It's just text on a page, basically, with some links and then a little bit of syntax, and markdown's not hard to, I feel like I'm preaching to the choir here on what markdown is, so uh, I'm not gonna get too in depth into how the syntax actually works. Um, but in your themes here, this is where the the theme that I pulled in from Hugo, from, from their um, theme site is, and basically I just configured it configured it in this file here, so you can see that I have all these different parameters set up so that as, as the years progress on this site, it's not gonna always be the 47th annual fall festival. Next year will be the 48th, the year after that the 49th. I don't wanna go into my content and change that directly, right? Because there's gonna be places where I might actually use this parameter all over the place in, in my site. Now if I miss it in one spot, somebody's gonna find that one spot where I missed it, right? So you can, you can make all these parameters and uh, use them throughout your content and specify, uh, specify in your content where those parameters are used. So it makes it easier to update that kind of content that's going to constantly change uh, so that's cool. I made a brochure site. I made, you know, a blog. I made project documentation. Uh, but can I do something else? So I used to work on a system that was called Oracle iStore. Has anyone ever heard of that? How about Oracle Enterprise Business Suite? Anybody ever work on ERP systems at all? <coughs> all right, cool. So since you haven't, here we go. Um, so this Oracle Enterprise Business Suite had a module within it called Oracle iStore. And what this was was a e-commerce platform that was built in JSP and Java and uh, a few other technologies too that I can't recall, uh, but this site for this business was just awful. It wasn't in version control, first of all. It had dead code everywhere. Uh, there was 1,400 custom JSP files all over the place, and no one knew what they were. Um, so I got tasked with make this work. Uh, that was literally the requirement. Make iStore work again. And it was one of those should I make it work again or should I just replace it? So this was the, maybe we can replace it with something like this. I don't know if that's a good idea and we didn't do it uh, because I moved on to a different company uh, for several reasons, but this being one of them. Uh, and I wasn't about to try to dig through that monolith of code and try to, try to fix it. So uh, I decided, well, let's try this. So basically I'm mocking up a, a product written in Markdown. And I figured I can probably take this Markdown and you know, automatically insert it from API calls and then get it that way from the database. But for now I'm just going to write a, a little Markdown page that has 
basically your price, your title, and a little description of what this thing is. And since I play bluegrass music, I figured, you know, why not use some mandolins? So I, really, I just ripped this off of like Guitar Center or something and used their content for my proof of concept. And I did that with another product. So I have two pieces of Markdown now for uh, two different products. Now, I'm, with this example, we were a .NET shop primarily, which is odd because I was a Java developer working in a .NET shop. But uh, so we decided we would go with that YM solution, which is something else now that I cannot remember the name of. And basically, this w would work in any kind of whatever your underlying static site generator is, whether it's Hugo or Jekyll or whatever. But what we're doing here is we're adding products in this pipeline. And what I'm doing is I'm reading all those product files, all those markdown files in, and I'm loading everything up and writing these out to HTML. So when I scan through this folder with all these products, it reads all that markdown and it will convert that to HTML for me when I build my site which is super nice because it, it's kind of like we've gone backwards in time, right? Because who here was writing websites back in like 94, 95, 96? So a lot of editing HTML by hand, right? And then we kind of got into the, well, let's build it with a framework. Like let's use Elm or, uh, well, Elm's pretty recent, but let's use uh, ASP.NET and all that. And then it's like, man, this is big and bulky and heavy, but it does the job. It's a different way to solve the problem. And now it's kind of like, well, let's go back the other way. So it's like a pendulum. We're swinging back and forth in, in between these ways to do it. Um, and you know, I, now that I have these, this HTML, I need to actually display this in a list of products. Uh, so this is a way to do that. So for each product that's uh, there, basically pull the properties out of out of that markdown and put it into my HTML code where it makes sense for whatever whatever divs and classes that I have. So, you know, HTML. Don't have to explain much more than that. Um, and I also needed a way to display just one single product. So, really, it's just the same thing where I'm pulling that metadata out and displaying, putting that into uh, just a small snippet of HTML code where if something went wrong, I could change it really quickly. If something was right, then it's really easy to understand what this thing does. Uh, it doesn't take me, you know, 20 minutes to actually read through a, a something in .NET and understand where all these pieces are going. This is just, here it is, right? These are all parameters within the, the, the template. So after a half a morning without coffee, uh, I came up with something that looked kind of like this, just based off of, you know, it was good enough, right? Like, yeah, we could, like this was better than the solution that we had at work, which is really sad because this isn't super great or fancy or anything. I can't even buy anything off of this site, and this was better than the solution that we had at work. Like, that's how bad it, the experience was. Um, so when people saw this, they were like, oh, you mean we could make our store look kind of like this? I'm like, yes, <laughs> right? Uh, and it drummed up some excitement. People got, like, really curious on when do we do this? It wasn't a question of if, it was when do we fix this problem? And this, this store was used for our B2C, or our B2B e-commerce. We had a different, we had a Magento solution for B2C, but the B2B e-commerce platform for that business was 14% of the revenue for the year. Like, that was a lot of money coming in. And granted, yeah, it's B2B sales, but if you, 
if you think about it for a second, your B2B person who's trying to order stock for their store, the last thing they want to do is order stock for their store. They want to serve their customer, right? Now that includes ordering stock for their store, but that also includes running the register, being in front of people, answering questions, getting their marketing done to bring customers into their door. So if they're having trouble navigating through this website to get product from you, why should they buy product from you? Because they can go to your competitor, there's nothing stopping them. In fact, there's a lot of times where they just left us as a customer because the experience was that bad. So, this started to raise questions throughout the business of what the hell are we doing? Like, we, we need to fix this problem. And, you know, this seems kind of technical, right? And we didn't have a lot of technical resources to actually do any of this. Uh, because we had five developers for 700 people, a company of that size. So, well, five software engineers and then maybe four front-end front -end people that worked on a different team for a different department and a, had a different organization structure and everything. And the two groups did not work together. Like, they would work together if they were allowed to work together, but they were kept separate. So we knew that in order to do this, I didn't have the time to sit there and like handhold and write the content uh, for this. So you can now, there's tools out there where you can on your site actually add a CMS on top of it. And Netlify has a good solution for this. So this is like what a one button click will do for you, right? And uh, I got it over here. It'll be much more interesting. But this is this is a one-click button push. I have a site, and I also have a CMS on here. And if I go to admin, as long as my internet connection is good, which I'm on a hotspot, so it might take it a second, but it's still pretty fast. Um, I'm using Netlify's CMS on top of this, and I have, what, with one button click, I have that site, I have this CMS on top of it, and I have identity. So like, this is, oh. Remind me to rotate my passwords. Uh, cool. Just like every good demo, it doesn't work. But. Now that I gave out my password too, on camera too, at that. <laughs> That's awesome. Uh, so I'm gonna skip over that since it's not agreeing with me. But trust me, it has a CMS and it just looks like any other WordPress CMS or uh, whatever other, see, Contentful or whatever. Uh, you have the same capabilities with editing your, uh, your content with Markdown and your users don't know it, which is cool. Um, good thing I have a screenshot in here to show you what it actually looks like, which, like I said, it looks like any other CMS tool. But what this gives you is, here's the power to make the content leave me alone, right? So you can go work on the next thing. Because the, I'm, I'm sure all your time is more valuable spent working on anything but content. Uh, maybe it is. Maybe that's what you do. Um, but how the hell did I go through that? Um, so how do I actually deploy this? So yeah, you could dump it on a web server. You could throw it up on an Azure or AWS instance or whatever uh, and deploy this to a CDN, sure. Uh, I went the Netlify route just because it was like seamless. So let me show you how it's done. And let me kill this other. So I'm killing that process for the presentation website. And this is actually the presentation I just gave, right? This entire presentation was 
kind of like smoke and mirrors, like this was actually a Hugo site running the entire time. So let's do this Hugo server. So I'm, I'm running on localhost right now, and my localhost is over here now. So cool. Now, I don't like the title of this talk, so let's go change it. Let's get some jam. Now I'm going to commit this. Bam, I'm committed. I'm going to push this up to my master branch on a uh, GitHub repository. And if I'm quick enough, uh, there it is. So we can see now that I'm building. So what's happening here is there's a, a Git hook uh, here where Netlify is looking at my repository and detects a change. And it goes, oh, there's a change. Let me auto-publish that for you. So it runs through here. It actually does the build process for me and deploys my site, all with me just making a commit. Um, fun fact, when you're connected to your CMS and you save that content, what you're actually doing behind the scenes is you're making a commit to your, your Git repository. So now your content is actually versioned, which is super awesome because guess who makes a lot of mistakes all the time other than developers? Content writers, yeah. Uh, I know because I was one. And uh, I misspelled a lot of words that ended up being profanity. So that was kind of bad. And I found out when I did it, and then I realized, oh, that's after I had like five scotches. Let's not do that again. Thankfully, it was like my own stuff and not like the company's stuff, because that would have been bad, would have got fired for that. But anyways, this thing deploys and it's live right now. So when I go here and reload this, oops. Let's get some jam, bam, done, deployed. How cool is that? Like, super simple. Um, but, you know, I wanted to go do something else after this, and the, the thing that I found at this festival that you know, I built this site for was I get in this jam session and I didn't know what the lyrics for a song were, or what the chord progression was for a song. I'm like, man, it sure would be nice if there was just like a super quick site, because keep in mind too, I'm out in the middle of nowhere in Indiana, and there's like a bar of reception on a good day, like a really good day. So, you know, internet speeds are super slow out there, and uh, you also have another 2,000 people at the same festival hitting that internet connection all in the same mobile carrier because at and is like the only one that actually works out there. And so, you know, I needed to retrieve this information and doing it on a lot of different other sites was super painful and everything. So I figured, oh, well, what if I just make a Jamstack site with this content on there and then it's, you know, I have control of it, I can deploy it, it's for me. You know, and it was really cool to build this because it was like kind of a, a mesh between my hobby and my job and my, my geek and my musical tastes, right? So when I'm out there, you know, this looks really good on the phone. Uh, that's another thing with a lot of these things is they look super good. But, you know, if I'm out there in a jam session, I'm like, Oh, we're gonna play Easy Chair? Okay, well, how's that go again? Well, now I can just pull it up on the phone and be like, oh, got it, and then put it away. Uh, so I think that's a really cool thing is when you can merge your different hobbies together and go, I know how to solve, I know how to solve a problem that I have with this other hobby. Uh, so maybe stat site generators are you know, a thing that you could do too for you know, for, I don't know, 
your knitting club. That's all I can think of right now. I'm sure. How many people are in knitting clubs? I'm not sure if that was serious or not. <laughs> um, but, you know, that's a, a super quick introduction to standard site generators and how they work um, and what they do. And because this is HTML, super fast. And JavaScript, super fast. So not a lot to worry about as far as speeds and times and that. And I'm sure there's things you could do, caching and stuff that you could do to improve site times. Uh, but that's just about all I had. If someone wants to come up here and like actually tinker around with any of my sites, that's cool. Uh, if you got any questions, that's cool. Uh, so Jamstack Radio is a podcast that's uh, pretty good. Uh, it's been maybe a month since I've seen any uh, episodes come out. Uh, but they get into things like using GraphQL. So remember I had all those product pages written in Markdown? You could pull uh, pull those items for your product with GraphQL and then just there they are. You don't even have to you don't have to write it down in Markdown, just pull those in from APIs and stuff. So that's the thing I want to tinker around with later and uh, wrap my brain around how that actually works. Um, and also jamstack.wtf, which is a real web domain. I didn't know that until I found it. I'm like, WTF? That's real? And then, you know, WTF and this WTF. Anyways, I'm really bad at with puns. Uh, but there's my blog, also a static site, and uh, my Twitter. Uh, so I'm going to leave you with, with this. Um, the whole reason I got involved and uh, started speaking was because at a conference in Al Huntsville, Alabama called DevSpace three, three years ago, um, I was with a friend and he brought me along and he was speaking there and I met all the speakers after their speaker dinner and one of the other guys, his name was Brandon, uh, asked me, so what are you talking about? And I said, uh, nothing really. I, I, I don't have anything to say. I'm, I'm just here. And like all shy and all of that. And he's like, you don't have anything to say? That's simply not true. Like this guy had no idea who I was. And he just matter of factly said, that's not true. And it took me aback. I'm like, how do you know that? <laughs> right? And he said, what are you working on right now? And I was working on builds for Oracle and automating that build. And I started telling him about it. And he's like, I, I don't actually care. Just go write a talk about that and go give it. I'm like, OK. I don't think I want to do that. And then over the course of the conference, it was like, I think I want to do that. And I tell you, that five-minute conversation that he had with me absolutely changed my life. Because before, I would get up, go to work, go home, go to sleep, get up, go to work, go home, go to sleep. That's all I did. And I, I realized that was a problem uh, when I woke up one morning, went to work, and realized, oh, there's nobody there. Oh, well. Pop back up. Okay, it's time for lunch. Still no one here. That's weird. Went, got lunch, came back. Went back to work. There's still no one there. Just worked. And it was about 2 o'clock when I actually like stopped and thought about it. It was Saturday. I'm like, well, might as well finish out the day. <laughs> and, and that's what I did. And it was absolutely like one of the lowest points of my life was right then. And so I went home. I was sitting on a chair. This is the next lowest point, point of my life. Sitting on the chair, drinking a beer, just like slumped like this. And my dog is behind me, and I didn't know it. I'm just watching a hockey game. And I go to drink, get another sip in between periods, and there was no beer left. And I had just opened it. And then I looked down at my dog, and my dog was drunk because he drank all my beer out of my bottle. And I went, what the hell am I doing with my life? And then I remembered this conversation I had with Brandon. I'm like, 
you know what, I am gonna write that, that talk. And so I did, and you know, meeting people at conferences and stuff has absolutely just transformed my career. I went from, you know, a job where I was burnt out, I didn't care, I just wanted to do the thing, go home for some reason, and then go back to work. And that's all I did. And after that point when I actually started getting involved with the community and talking to people, it was like, no, I wanna make this place better. I actually have ideas and things to do here where, and I also have a life outside of this where I need to do something else. Because if I keep on working like this, I'm gonna die of a heart attack. Because I saw people, like that's happened to people I worked with. They literally died of a heart attack and it was stress induced. And you know, that's a really scary thing. So always take care of yourself. Always, you know, make connections and meet with people and talk to them. And if, if you feel like you don't have a story, you're wrong. You do have a story and you should go out and share that story with somebody because you might end up impacting someone's life and turning their whole life around in a good way, right? So that's my challenge to all you. Go forth and share your story. And that's all I had. Any questions? Yeah. So where do the static slides come in? Because obviously like all these static slides have to be shared with the slides and stuff like that. So what are the capabilities of that? So one of the limitations is this is static content that's being served, right? It's all uh, at the end of the day, it's all compiled HTML. So uh, not seeing right now, but this um, all this content gets generated in HTML, and then at that point, you can't really change it until you actually make a change to your content. Now, one thing that you could possibly do is make external API calls out to some kind of data source, like using GraphQL uh, or something, and pulling that data in so it's still static content, but you're dynamically changing. It's static HTML, but the content within is actually dynamic where you're pulling that from API. So um, really what this gives you is the ability to templatize most things and to structure it in such a way where uh, the underlying foundation of your site is always there, and then you could pull in different content. So I don't know if it's a good idea to actually build an e-commerce system from scratch with this. I would probably use somebody else's e-commerce system like a Shopify or a Magento or something. But uh, you know, for a proof of concept thing to like get it into somebody's brain, this is super quick. I mean, it was half a morning to actually do. Uh, is that kind of sort of answers the question? Yeah. Um, I'll, you know, I'll, I'll have to think about that. I'll have to figure out what cipher I want to use based on the, the keynote. Maybe I'll just do a, I'll probably just do a Caesar cipher. Yeah, so that's cool. Reminder to myself to actually change that because I forgot about it until you brought that up, so thank you. <laughs> Any other questions? <laughs> Mm-hmm. 
Yeah. They're like daytime libraries. That's, to me, that's the really cool thing. And like hooking up. <laughs> yeah, I, I use a Windows machine at home. Uh, and, you know, with Hugo and Jekyll and what was the other one? The other one I used a lot, Gatsby. Uh, Gatsby was another, uh, another site that I, or static site generator that I use, which back when I used it, it was like, 0 0.1, which actually Hugo is like 0 0.5, so it's not even a one dot release yet. Uh, but I will say the difference between the Gatsby and the Hugo platforms that I saw was Gatsby kind of broke on me all of a sudden when, it, when I upgraded to the next version and then I had to basically rebuild my site. Uh, so that kind of turned me off, but I, I was under the, uh, under the, I knew that that could happen, right? I, I was expecting that. I'm still expecting that to happen with Hugo, but I kind of feel like it's not going to happen. Uh, but as far as like running on different platforms and things, all of these were like super easy to set up that I've used. Uh, Gitbook was, I've used it on Mac and Linux and Windows. So uh, not too worried about cross-platform. Uh, I think he said something about the, the CMS solutions. So yeah, Netlify has theirs, but you, you could hook into like a Contentful or uh, Graph CMS, which I saw something where they just changed something about their support licensing or something. Uh, so you might want to double check that, but uh, those were a couple CMS tools that we were considering for work and we just haven't done that research yet into what makes the most sense. Uh, but you should be able to just pull that data out of whatever CMS and uh, use it for your static site. Yeah. So Netlify uh, is a CDN, but they have a CMS offering, um, Netlify CMS. And I think this is the right site. Um, so Hugo is one of the options. Uh, I went for that just because I'm comfortable with it. Uh, but they also have CMS built on top of uh, Jekyll, or sorry, Gatsby. So this is literally a one-click deploy. So that coffee uh, business thing that I showed was literally, I clicked this button and that's what happened. It gave me all that. It set up a Git repository for me. It set up the identity for me. It set up the CMS for me. It set up the deploy for me. Uh, what's that? And yeah, and they host it for me. Um, so they're more than just the CMS. They're this, this whole CDN, this whole build pipeline. Um, and they also have, uh, you can get to your, um, HTTPS certificates and stuff. So uh, they'll, they have a hook in with Let's Encrypt so you can get HTTPS everywhere, uh, which is super awesome. They make that super painless to do. But I think we're probably out of time. Uh, I will be around, so if you got any more questions, let me know. And uh, thanks everyone. <laughs>